Hey there friends and thanks for joining me. It's Tawny the Frugal Green Girl and I wanted to introduce a quick little video series that I actually already started but I didn't introduce it as a series at the time. So not long ago I did a quick video about you know LED light bulbs and how much money they can actually save and so that's sort of the beginning of this fall season where I'm going to be doing some different projects around the house and you know just some things about how we are saving money and not just you know do a list of projects that you can do to save money but actually doing them with you and showing how they're done but also do some quick calculations on whether or not they actually make a big difference and how much money you'll save so you know some of them you know you can use like a watt a watt reader a watt meter i think it's a watt meter that i actually checked out from the library for free so I got to play with that for a little while and then some of the others, you know, home heat calculators and just different things. So, you know, just calculating some of the ways that we could actually save some money. So I don't want to start with the biggest project first, but that's sort of the order that we went in when we were doing these projects. So I guess it just makes sense to put this one out next, but it's adding insulation to your attic. So I'm going to show you a quick video of the before we added the insulation and then explain why it is that we decided that we needed to go ahead and do that. Okay, so what's the deal with the attic insulation and why should we add attic insulation? Well, there's lots of reasons. The first one is because a lot of times when houses were originally built, they didn't add very much, especially in the area era when my house was built back in the 70s, and it's just not adequate. We live in a cold climate and we could really use more insulation. You can see they've blown in a little bit of fiberglass over here, but otherwise, <laughs> There's really not a lot in here. And the other thing that's really a big deal is what they call thermal bridging. Do you see how you can see the studs? I mean, you can't really see them all that well because this lighting is terrible, but thermal bridging is when the wood shows through and it basically acts as a straw and it can kind of suck the heat from underneath out or the opposite direction in the summer. When you want the heat out of the house, it comes right in and heats the ceiling and then your house is warmer. So covering up these thermal bridges to where none of the studs are showing will make a huge impact on how much comfortable or how more comfortable your house is and um, your bills. So it's actually really easy to do. When you have a situation like this, you can add insulation by throwing some bats on here you know, like that. You could just get some more bats and lay it on top like that. This is actually the back that goes over the thing where I'm standing, the uh, the opening here. Um, but you could put a whole bunch of those in here um, on top of all of this. You could do blow-in insulation like this, where they have this um, fiberglass insulation that they've blown in. Or you can do cellulose blow-in insulation. And cellulose is my choice, and I'll explain that a little bit. Um, downstairs and not up here in the attic. So as you can see there was a lot of you know thermal bridging, the insulation was very thin, so yeah it just was not adequate. And so putting our numbers into the home heat calculator we found out that it was definitely way under what it was supposed to be for this you know climate, which I already knew anyway because we have had a house that was just like that, our last house was just like that, and we added insulation to it and our cut, we cut our bill basically in half overnight you know, just by doing that. So I knew it would be a worthwhile project to do. And so before we could even do the insulation, the first thing we actually did was we went into our attic and we covered the can lights with these little rock wool hat things. And it's basically because the can lights need to breathe. They can't have the, you know, insulation laying directly on them. But unfortunately, if we just pull the insulation back from them, they can be an area where it kind of, it's a heat straw, where it, you know, draws a lot of the heat out of the house or the heat in in the summertime. So it works both ways. So we went ahead and put those covers over the can lights. The second thing we did is we sealed the ductwork. So, and then the last thing we did is we insulated the ductwork where the air return comes in. That is the air that sends it back to the furnace but it's still good to insulate these um, for two reasons. One, if the air is warmer before it even gets to the furnace, the furnace doesn't have to work as hard or use as much gas to heat the air. But secondly, by having the air returns not be heated, or excuse me, insulated, what can actually happen is the heat can go up into, you know, they're usually in the ceiling, or at least ours are, um, but the heat will go up into the ceiling where those ducts are, and then again, they create a heat straw where they, you know, pull the heat out. So or the heat again in in the summertime because insulation works both ways. It actually works to keep you know your house warmer in the winter and then keep it cooler in the summer, which is fantastic. So 
once we got all those projects done and we had the heat, you know, the ductwork done, you know, sealed and insulated, we had the can lights all ready. Next, we were ready to go ahead and add some insulation to our attic. And of course, we had lots of options there. You can do fiberglass bats, which is what was mainly up there now, uh, but it's pre-cut, you know, pieces of insulation that you can put up there. We chose not to go with any kind of fiberglass insulation because it's super itchy and I've worked with it before and it's awful, <laughs> super awful. But the other reason is it's just faster and easier to do a blow-in insulation like this. And so there are several different types on the market right now. This one is called Green Fiber and I am really impressed with this product. Not only was it really easy to install, but it's really environmentally friendly because it's actually made out of recycled newspaper that they treat so that it's not, you know, a fire hazard, they put a fire retardant on it, but it's, you know, formaldehyde free and so it's mostly non-toxic except for the fire retardant. And again, it's really easy to install. It takes two people to install it. You have to have one person who kind of cuts open these bags and then feeds them into the machine. And then the machine kind of agitates and, you know, mixes up the compacted bale until it's nice and fluffy. And then it sends it down into this hose. And then the other person who's in the attic, which was me, um, kind of blows the insulation in above whatever the insulation you have in your attic is. So whatever kind of insulation that you currently have, you know, if you have some really super old blow-in insulation, you could have some, you know, fiberglass bats, whatever it is, you know, if you feel like your insulation is inadequate, you could put this on top of it and it was really easy to do. So Home Depot is actually where we got this and they had two really cool specials. The first one is if you buy 20 bags, you get the machine rental for free, which is a really good deal. The second special was they have a contractor pack, which means if you buy 100 bags, you get it for a lower price. It's about a 30% drop than if you were to buy anything under 100 bags. And we went ahead and got the attic insulation done. And while it's still warm right now because it's late summer, um, it's definitely made a difference. Like when you come inside, you could definitely feel that the house stays, you know, cooler when, when it's hot outside than it used to. And I've even noticed some reduction in the no noise from like the road and stuff like that when we're in our rooms trying to sleep and stuff like that. So it's definitely made a big impact. So <laughs> at our comfort level at least and, you know, things like that. So let's talk the actual numbers then. So the amount of money that we had to spend in order to get this project done um, we estimate with our home heat calculator that it's going to be about 50% of that cost within the first year, or at least the first winter that we're going to be able to save. It's hard to say for sure. I guess we'll have to just, you know, go through the winter and see what, you know, impact it makes on our bills. But okay, so how much could an average person maybe expect to make back on an investment like this? That really depends. It depends on what kind of insulation that you've chosen and how much insulation your house currently has and then how much insulation that you've actually added. So the cool thing about this blow-in insulation is you can actually make it to where, where, you know, whatever level you want to. If you wanted to add just a little bit, you could. If you wanted to blow it in super thick, you could totally do that too. So obviously the more insulation that you add, the more savings that you're going to see. And also the less insulation that you have, you know, the more inadequate it is, the more of a difference it's really gonna make on your bill. So most people will see somewhere between a 25 and 50% reduction on their winter heating costs. Hopefully that video was helpful to you. If you need to add some insulation to your attic, this is definitely something that is a easy DIY project to do. Definitely any homeowner can do it. Anyway, hopefully this video was helpful to you. I'm Frugal Green Girl and we'll see you next time.